Welcome back. 13 minutes before the top of the hour, President Joe Biden held a phone call with allies yesterday to reaffirm America's support for Ukraine and coordinate ongoing efforts. Speaking with heads of state and various European leaders, NBC News reports that President Biden, quote, hoped to convey that the U.S. will continue to supply aid to Ukraine. The call comes after a continuing resolution passed over the weekend that left out any further aid to Kyiv. Joining us now to talk about this, Democratic Congressman Seth Magaziner of Rhode Island. He is a member of the Committees on Homeland Security and Natural Resources. Congressman, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, let's talk, let's start there with the idea of future U.S. aid to Ukraine. There wasn't any money uh, in the deal that was struck over the weekend. We've heard from the president uh, in recent days saying that he believed House Speaker McCarthy would keep his word and that there would be additional funding forthcoming. But now there's no House Speaker McCarthy, and it's not clear who will succeed him and what their position on Ukraine funding will be. How concerned are you? Well, there's two things that, that people need to understand when it comes to the war in Ukraine. Number one, it is absolutely vital that the Ukrainians are successful in beating this illegal invasion orchestrated by Vladimir Putin. It's in the United States' national security interest to stop Putin and support Ukraine. Second, there is broad bipartisan support for supporting the Ukrainians in their fight to freedom in Congress. We've had several votes this year in the House on Ukraine aid, and consistently, more than 300 members of the House, in addition to strong majorities of the Senate, have shown their support for continuing uh, to arm the Ukrainians with the tools that they need uh, in order to win this war and repeal, uh, 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 defeat Vladimir Putin. So the support is there. And I think if we saw anything during the speakership of Kevin McCarthy, it, it was that the House doesn't work when you have a speaker who only caters to a very small minority of the chamber. Kevin McCarthy is not speaker today because for the last nine months, he would let a small group of dissidents set the agenda for him and do extreme things like try to cut Title I funding for education by 70 percent, criminalize abortion, go after Social Security, launch a baseless impeachment of the president, and most recently block aid to Ukraine. The speakership does not work when you only let a small number of four, five, ten people call the shots. The same four or five or ten people who, by the way, ended his speakership last night because no matter how extreme uh, an agenda McCarthy pushed, it wasn't extreme enough for them. So my hope is that the next speaker, whoever that ends up being, is someone who will recognize that a strong bipartisan majority in both the House and the Senate support Ukraine aid and that we will be able to get it passed this year. There are a number of mm -hmm. uh, procedural avenues that we could use uh, to deliver the president's request for supplemental aid to Ukraine. And it's going to take a House speaker who will listen to the majority of the chamber yeah. as opposed to listening to a small handful of, of uh, uh, the most extreme members. So, Congressman, you just outlined all the reasons why Democrats didn't end up supporting McCarthy yesterday. But what happens next? First of all, there will be no speaker for at least a week. The clock is ticking uh, until government funding runs out again. How concerned are you about the future right now of the lower chamber? Uh, you, know, you have to be concerned because, uh, again, uh, there's a cohort of the Republican Party in, in Congress that uh, cares more about getting TV hits and playing to their base than about governing. And I think you've got, we've all got real concerns about whether the Republican caucus in, in the House is capable of governing, if they're built to be a majority party or not. Uh, that being said, you know, we all felt confident on the Democratic side that uh, Kevin McCarthy was not the right person to lead the chamber. He had catered to the extremists on issues like uh, Ukraine and abortion and gun safety and other things that matter to the American people instead of listening to the majority of the chamber. And uh, so I'm hopeful that uh, we can elect a new speaker quickly and that that new speaker will be someone who will work across party lines in a bipartisan way to get things done, which is what the American people want. An eventful few weeks ahead, to be certain. Democratic Congressman Seth Magaziner of Rhode Island, we really appreciate you coming on this morning. We hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks for having me.